Okay, today's lesson is answering the question, how can I use an area model to model division? An area model is basically, boys and girls, the opposite of when you would do the break apart method or the box method for multiplication. It's along those lines, but with division. We're going to be breaking apart the dividend to find our quotient. So for example, when we have 42 divided by 2, we can make an area model. In an area model, your divisor always goes right up here because you're always dividing that dividend by that divisor. And your quotient will end up going on this side and we'll end up adding it all up. If you have any remaining numbers left over, you then those will be called your remainder and those will go here. So let's look at that problem in particular. So let's think about what we know about 42 and 2. Well, if I'm looking at my compatible numbers, I know that 2 and 4 are compatible. I know that there are two groups of 2 and 4. But wait, I know that that 4 isn't just a 4. It's 4 tens, 40. So I know that it doesn't just go into that 4 two times, it actually goes in there 20 times. So remember, our divisor always goes up here, and your quotient is always going to go over here. So we said that it goes in about 20 times. Then I'm going to multiply. 2 times 20 is 40. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to subtract that quotient from here to see if there's any left over. Yes, there is. I need to make sure that I'm dividing this 2 now by 2. How many groups of 2 are in 2? That's right, 1. And 2 times 1 is 2. Yep, right here I have my dividend. Perfect. And so now I need to add up my quotient. And my quotient, or my answer, is 21. Boys and girls, when you're using compatible numbers with division, it's not always going to be perfect, and there's not always going to be a compatible number. And that's where using your multiples and that process of thinking is going to help you. Let's take the division problem. 126 divided by 7. Now I know my multiples of 7 are 7, 14, 21. Well, 2, it'd be too big because there's 12 tens there and I'm looking for 14, so that's too big. So I need to probably go down to just 1 10 and try that. 7 times 10 is 70. Subtract. is now 56. So now thinking of my multiples of 7, how many groups of 7 can I make in 56? <gasps> I know that 7 times 8 is 56. I have nothing left over and I know that yep that matches my dividend so my quotient is 18. So boys and girls, just be very careful to not stop and just say, oh, there's not a compatible number. It can't be divided. Make sure you're stopping and really thinking about it. And it's okay to just guess. And if you're wrong over here, then you can go back and try again. That's why there's such thing as an eraser. So the first problem we're going to look at is 184 divided by 8. Let's go back in our brain and think about what we know about division. We know that this right here is our dividend. We know that we're dividing it by our divisor in hopes to get our quotient. Now, let's think about what we know about 184 and 8. I know that I'm going to use my compatible numbers. I'm going to look at my divisor of 8 and my dividend. I'm going to first look that I have about 18 tens. 
what do I know about 8 and 18? Well, I know that with my multiples of 8, 8 times 2 is almost 18, because 8 times 2 is 16. So I know that 8 can go into 18 about 2 times. So if 8 can go into 18 2 times, it must go into 18 tens about 20 times. And this is where our area model comes in. Our divisor goes on top. And remember, our quotient will always be here on the side. So we're going to put 20 here, and we're going to multiply. 8 times 20 is 160. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to subtract 160 from my dividend to get 24. Now I'm going to say to myself, hmm, I'm still going to be dividing. How many times can I put 8 into 24? <gasps> hey, I know that multiplication and division are inverse operations. And I know that 8 times 3 is 24. So I know that my next part of my quotient will be 3 because 8 times 3 is 24. I'm going to come over and I'm going to subtract it. And I have nothing left, so I know that I'm done. Oh, no, you're not. Now we need to come over and we need to figure out our quotient. We need to add up our quotient. And we have nothing left over, so no remainder. So our quotient is 23. 184 divided by 8 is 23.